Hello everyone, welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machette. I'll bet you're wondering what's inside this box. We'll show you in a moment. But first, let me just mention these containers made out of wood uh, were indicative of the, the way aircraft manufacturers presented their proposals to the Pentagon and to the Navy brass back in the early 19 and mid-1950s. Inside this box is a model that you will not believe. It's a one-of-a-kind factory treasure. And so this begins the story of how Republic Aviation Corporation in Farmingdale, New York, created airplanes that spanned from the end of the Korean War with the F-84 Thunder Jet to the supersonic era in 1957-58 with the F-105B Thunder Chief. Before we open this box, let's take a look at the four airplanes that we're going to be examining in this episode. Well, here they are the four treasured factory models from the model shop in Farmingdale, New York, showing the Republic airplanes from the F-84 Thunderjet all the way up to the F-105 Thunder Chief. I should mention that I've already done videos on the history of the F-105 and the history of the company itself, as well as the Republic Rainbow, the XR-12, and I'll have links to all those episodes in the title block below. What we're going to do now is take a look at the evolution from the post-World uh, War II first jet airplane by Republic, the F-84 Thunderjet straight wing, into the swept wing F-84F Thunderstreak, the AP or Advanced Project number 63, which on this model is already labeled F-105, and there's a great story with that, and the F-105B, the first production configuration of the great Mach 2 Thunder Chief. So let's talk about these airplanes uh, in detail, and remember that box we started with? Let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, as we open the box, you'll notice first and foremost, the model is cradled inside the box beautifully. It sits in its own retainer. The stand has its own retainer with a swiveling uh, wood piece that allows it to open up and be removed from the box. But this is the Republic F-84 Thunderjet modified on one wing for Project Tiptoe, which was a unique parasite fighter proposal uh, with these airplanes attached to a B-29. We'll get into that in a moment. But the craftsmanship that made the box mirrors the craftsmanship that made the model. And this is how these models, these one-of-a-kind, highly valuable factory treasures made out of wood, were transported to the Pentagon on the East Coast or wherever they had to go for these military presentations. And now let's talk a little more about the F-84 Thunderjet in Project Tiptoe. The model you see in the box is the Project Tiptoe F-84 Thunderjet that was attached to the right wing of the B-29. These flight tests occurred in 1950, the longest lasting two hours and 40 minutes with the fighters attached to the bomber. You'll notice this model has unique nomenclature on the buzz number as well as an interesting device on the left wingtip. Project Tiptoe was one of a number of studies of how to extend the range and protection of piston-powered bombers after World War II with jet fighters. It was an interesting amalgam of eras with the jet age and the piston age as well. But uh, the F-84 was selected and this particular airplane specific to this buzz number uh, was used in the test. This is the right hand airplane. As you'll notice the attach point is on the left wing tip. Then there was a left hand airplane with just the opposite. The attach point was on the right wing. Uh, the project was ultimately unsuccessful. We'll talk in a little more detail about that. But I want to mention to you the buzz number. What is a buzz number? The buzz number in this era were the large numbers painted on the side of the airplane in the event that it buzzed a town or a church or uh, whatever and that people on the ground could identify the airplane to report it. And so that became called the buzz number. F for fighter, S was the designation for F-84 Thunder Jet and Thunder Streak. 661 was the last three digits of the uh, serial number, which is 48661 and the A referred to a modified airplane at that time. So 661 was the right-hand airplane. It was flown by Major Bud Anderson at that time of World War II fame, best friends with Chuck Yeager. And so it's a very unique and very historic airplane. So now we've seen how the F-84 Thunderjet played a pivotal role in the parasite fighter studies of Project Tiptoe in 1950. Three years later, as the Korean War came to an end, the F-84 had written a number of pages in history. Uh, you can see here the model in the uh, F-84 E and G tip tank version. The airplane was significant because it got Republic from the P-47 Thunderbolt into the jet age. The next step was swept wings. 
And we're going to look at how the F-84F Thunderstreak emerged from a prototype that had an even different designation. Now that we've looked at the late 1940s straight-wing F-84 Thunder jet, let's see where that design went in the early 1950s with the swept-wing F-84F Thunder Streak. But there was an interesting step in between. You ever heard of the YF-96? That designation referred to the prototype airplane, which essentially, if you look at these photos, was an F-84 Thunder jet fuselage, new engine, but the same basic fineness ratio, a bubble canopy, and swept wings, the YF-96. Due to a number of political considerations and mostly budgetary considerations, uh, Republic was basically uh, in the zone of not using a new designation and new funding for a brand new airplane. So this then became the F-84 F-Series swept wing Thunder Streak. In the view you're looking at now, I want to call your attention to a unique feature of the Republic airplanes, the six o'clock window, as you see here. These are the windows that are aft of the main canopy. And the function of this, because it had a solid turtle deck and not a bubble canopy per se, was that this allowed the pilot to literally look over his shoulder and see behind the airplane. Uh, and then they, of course, added the rear view mirrors to do that as well. But that is what these are for. And the canopy was a unique patented uh, design to Republic. Uh, cantilevered. It lifted up and back to allow the pilots to literally step over the side into the airplane as opposed to squeezing into a canopy that raised from the rear. And so these were the features of the F-84 Thunder Jet. It was a transonic airplane and it really moved the needle for Republic from uh, the straight wing subsonic airplane to the beginning of the supersonic era. I should mention that the F-84 was evolved in its role as a fighter bomber. A number of pilots who had flown it that I spoke with mentioned that it was a very stable gun platform. And the F-84 served as an interim step. There was the XF-91 Thunder Scepter, which was a supersonic airplane, but this was the segue from the swept wing subsonic machine into the uh, beginning of the supersonic age, which we'll look at in a moment. The final thing to mention about the F-84 is that there was a photo recon version named the RF-84F Thunder Flash, neat play on words, for a photo airplane. That had a photo nose that you see here in this photograph and uh, it was really considered probably the most successful version of the F-84, serving uh, with NATO countries and well into the 1960s as a photo recon airplane. The model that you see here says F-105 on the airplane and on the base, but was it really? Well, in a way. This is design study AP-63. AP stands for Advanced Project. And it is the beginning of the F-105 Thunder Chief, but you can see the lines of the F-84 still uh, very evident. The idea here being a uh, more modern version of the fighter bomber. At this point, inertial navigation systems were starting to come into play and advanced uh, flight control systems as well as very powerful engines like the Pratt & Whitney J-75. And so Republic was upping the ante, as it were, uh, with a fighter bomber and uh, possibly a nuclear delivery aircraft that could go Mach 2. And what's interesting is when you look at the air intake configuration, much like the RF-84F Thunder Flash, the rounded nose, um, it's not quite there yet. But this model is extremely uh, rare and a treasure in the sense that this was used in photos in Aviation Week as the very tip of the uh, opening of the lid of the story of the F-105, which was highly classified at that time. And so this represents the first look at what became the F-105 Thunder Chief. There are two more things to mention about the AP-63 that you might find interesting. Number one is the nose cone. You notice that it's kind of a yellow amber uh, shade as opposed to black. And this was the original radome uh, with the uh, untreated, unpainted fiberglass to make sure that the radar antenna didn't have any interference from any metal structure. So uh, eventually these were painted black, but as was vogue in the Air Force at that time, radomes were that uh, as I said, that raw fiberglass color, which was unique. The other thing to mention is the national insignia and the Air Force title on the swept wing. You'll notice that they're straight relative to the line of flight of the airplane, which uh, again was an adaptation as swept wings came into being. The Air Force still maintained that the national insignia and Air Force title be readable on a swept wing. And eventually the uh, national insignias and titles were swept along with the wing. That came later. But I want to just call your attention to the fact that you have a massive national insignia on the left wing and a USAF title with periods in between each letter, which was, again, the style for the markings of airplanes in that time period. 
Well, here it is, the star of the show, the Republic F-105B Thunder Chief, the first production configuration of the airplane. There were some unique differences to the B model. Compare this to the photo of the YF-105A prototype, which first flew at Edwards Air Force Base in October of 1955. You'll notice the AP-63 style flat air intakes, the shorter nose and the smaller fuselage, which housed a Pratt & Whitney J-57, which was not the final engine selected for the airplane, but it was enough to get the machine into the air and achieve Mach 1 on its very first flight. The B model had uh, a number of substantial differences. The larger fuselage holding the Pratt & Whitney J-75, the ferry style sugar scoop intakes on the forward leading edge route, it still uh, had the six o'clock window on the canopy and the solid turtle deck, which was a trademark of Republic airplanes at that time. You'll notice that on the model, there's no buzz number yet or tail number yet. It was the very beginning of the uh, F-105B in flight test. The B model flew in 1956, also at Edwards. And the two other features of the B that are unique uh, are the air intake for the afterburner cooling on the leading edge of the dorsal fin. In the very first photos ever released to the public, uh, that was so secret that it was airbrushed out so that people couldn't see it. And then the trademark ventral fin. This is really a, a distinctive uh, uh, item on the 105 and, and really responsible for the airplane's very elegant look. Uh, in this view of the B model in flight over Edwards in what they call the high corridor over Highway 58, you'll see the ventral fin, uh, which was put to good use in lateral stability when the airplane was at high angles of attack like takeoff and landing. Another unique feature on this model in particular is the fact that the national insignia and the Air Force tiles are still perpendicular to the line of flight. They're not swept on the wing as was done on the operational airplanes seen in this photo. But uh, you'll notice that it's uh, USAF without the periods in between each letter and the massive star and bar. Uh, no doubt that this was a United States Air Force airplane. But uh, uh, as you see, the model represents the evolution of the airplane just the way things happened. The markings changed, there were subtle differences and changes, and uh, it was always an evolutionary process as the airplane went from early flight test to delivery to the Air Force in 1958. So there you have it, the amazing story of the Republic Aviation Corporation and the development from the F-84 Thunderjet to this magnificent Mach 2 F-105 Thunder Chief. Special thanks to James Plains for the use of these beautiful models. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Mashat, and until next time, take care.